material cost, that is landing gear. I call all this stuff landing gear. Alrighty. Basic characteristics of a virus has a capsid, which is a covering over the nucleic acid. The capsid, think of the roof on your house, except the roof goes all the way around your house. Okay? And the roof is made up of shingles. We call those capsomers, capsomer units. So uh, some people call them capsomeres, some people call them capsomers. So in order to consider this thing a virus, it must have a capsid. And inside the capsid, it has a single kind of nucleic acid. So in other words, virus contains either DNA or RNA, but not both one or the other, and it's an obligate intracellular parasite. It must get inside a host cell to be replicated. All a virus is then is a capsid with nucleic acid inside. This is the viral genome. Nucleic acid, sometimes we'll call it the viral genome, sometimes we'll call it the viral nucleic acid, sometimes we'll call it the viral RNA, sometimes we'll call it the viral DNA. Don't want you to be confused. Um, that's why I'm warning you ahead of time. Here's the capsid, the covering over the nucleic acid. All the units are called capsomers, and they're made of protein. It's a protein covering. So what do you think is in the viral genome? Well, one thing that's in the viral genome is the gene to make the proteins, to make the capsomers, to make the capsid. And other genes in there that might make it harmful to you. <coughs> Viruses exhibit host specificity. That word, host specificity. Host specific means it's only going to infect a certain type of host. There are some viruses that infect plants, some viruses that infect animals, there are viruses that infect protozoa, viruses that infect fungi. There are viruses that infect every life form on the planet. Everybody gets viruses, even bacteria get viruses. What do we call a virus that infects bacteria? Bacteriophage. Bacteriophage, good. And some people say phage, uh, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I should say phage, because I'm kind of a long islander, but I always say bacteriophage. Okay, so. A virus is going to be specific to a host. Now, sometimes viruses will go through a genetic shift where they actually seem like they suddenly change hosts, and that's because a mutation happened. And the viral genome is small, so a mutation in the viral genome is a big event. If you only have a few genes, if you have a mutation in one of them, that's a large percentage of your genome. So viral mutations, can result in big changes. And enough of a change to be considered a genetic shift, in which case you might even shift to have a new host. Uh, did anybody see that movie, Contagion? Mm -hmm. Meryl Streep? So in that movie, the bat has a bat virus. The virus is endemic in the <coughs> bat population. By the way, in your handout package, there's some definitions, endemic, pandemic, Epidemic, you need to know those definitions for your test. The virus is endemic in the bat population. That means it exists at a low level in the bat population. Some bats will get it, and they're immune to it, they'll be fine. Some bats, not so immune, they might get sick, and some of them might even die, but not a lot of them. So bats have this virus in their population. So the bats eating a piece of fruit flies over the pig's cage accidentally drops a fruit into the pig's cage. The fruit now has the bat saliva on it, or maybe even blood, who knows. The pig eats the piece of fruit, the virus enters the pig. So now you have a bat virus in a pig. But when the virus gets inside the pig, the change of host was enough to spur something to happen, a mutation happens, and the virus now can live in pig cells. 
Viruses used to live in bat cells, but now it evolved to live in pig cells because it had a mutation. And the pig gets slaughtered and served for dinner. Mm -hmm. And then Meryl Streep either ate the pig or actually, remember she took a picture with the chef and the chef's apron was all bloody from slaughtering the pig or something? So it could have been in the pig's blood, could have been in the food, I don't know. But it shifted again. But it didn't have to shift much because guess what? Pig cells and human cells are pretty close. So the major shift happened when it went from bat to pig. And then once the pigs, the virus could live in the pig, when it got in humans, it could live in the human. The problem is, human has never seen that virus before. We have absolutely no immunity to it. And that's why she got sick so fast and died so fast. Because it was a new virus to us. We had never seen it before. We had no way to fight it. So. Is that what happened with Ebola? Yeah. Ebola is, uh, I don't really know a lot about the history of Ebola, but um, to say when all that happened. But with Ebola, apparently, there's a Ebola virus that's in the bat population. But apparently, it was a particular tree that had a big bat population, and this infection was in the bats of that colony, that tree. So maybe a lot of bats don't get it, but for some reason they had an outbreak in that bat population that lived in that tree. Well, people in Zaire or Africa or wherever, they're poor people. Their economy is bad, their political situation is what makes the economy so bad. And these people are desperate, and so they eat bushmeat. They'll eat deer and bats, whatever. So you see pictures of them, they actually put the bats on a barbecue. And yeah. these are big freaking bats. These are huge bats, and they like put it on a stick like a bat popsicle. <laughs> or a bat kebab. <laughs> That's what it is, it's a bat shish bomb. They put them on a stick and then they roast the bat on the barbecue and then they ate the bat. Well, maybe the bats weren't cooked well enough or maybe even if you cooked it well enough it wouldn't kill the virus, I don't know. But And that's how they got the virus from the bats, from eating the bat meat. Or if the bat had bitten a deer and the deer had the virus and then they ate deer, they'd get it from eating the deer meat. So then the people have the virus in them and then the virus is an animal virus, right? It's in bats and deer, but now it's in us. The virus must have adapted to be able to live in humans, but this is not the first time humans have had Ebola. They've had Ebola for probably hundreds yeah, of that's years. Why I'm so curious. But this was just a particularly big outbreak. So that's why I'm curious why it became such a big, big outbreak, mm -hmm. because that population of bats was a large population and a lot of people ate those infected bats. Because people live in more closer quarters now there's just more Well, people that's true there. too. Yeah, and then they interacted with other people and it just got a really big outbreak. Yeah, kind of weird. <coughs> I'll have to get on my goal poster up there for you. Okay, we did that, we did that. Host specificity. So viruses are typically host specific. We'll talk about it again, but what makes viruses host specific is that they're actually recognized by antigens on the surface of the host cell. The virus has antigens. The host cell has receptors that recognize those antigens. Why, stupid host cell, why would you have receptors for viral antigens? Well, that might demonstrate <coughs> some kind of an evolutionary relationship between cells and, you know, human cells or other cells and viruses. Not only are viruses typically specific for their type of host, but they are also typically specific for the type of tissue. If you get a rhinovirus, like rhinoceros, rhinovirus generally means it enters your respiratory system through your nose. Adenoviruses infect the glandular tissue. Most viruses are in the blood, and I don't know if there's a special name for that. Uh, then there's also enteroviruses. Infects tissue of the digestive system, like your liver, 
like hepatitis. So like um, with rabies, when you know animal bites, there's really that many different strains of it, that many genes <coughs> for the switch every time it goes in your gut. No, rabies is one that can infect multiple hosts. So, so that would be that generalist thing yeah. that caused by. Yeah. So some viruses are more generalists, and some are more host specific. But um, yeah, rabies can infect coons, cats, dogs, lots of different animals and humans so too. Which I'm going to show you that probably went through some evolution, but it can infect all those different organisms. Huh? I'd say about. Is there any animal that it can't infect? I don't know, I'd have to Google that one. I mean, like, is it like a kangaroo with a bite you? You're safe. I don't know. I'd have to Google that one. <laughs> but which reminds me, did you see the thing on the news about the leprosy cases in Florida? No, I haven't. Nope. From armadillos. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a test question. It might have been on your last test. Armadillos, believe it or not, armadillos carry mycobacterium leprae. In fact, Mycobacterium leprae is very hard to work with in the lab because we don't know how to culture it and give it what it needs. They call that fastidious. Piggy. Fastidious means picky. Some bacteria are fastidious. They're hard to grow because we don't know what they need. So what do you think we grow it in? Armadillos. So if you're doing research on Mycobacterium leprae, you probably have an armadillo colony. Those are your research um, what, animals. That's where you have to grow your Mycobacterium leprae in armadillos. Well, how do they want to eat those armadillos? Sometimes you just have to handle the armadillos. But um, yeah, I've heard them. cases before where stupid rednecks killed the armadillos and ate them. And that's yeah, how that's they disgusting. got leprosy. But in this past news article, it was just from handling them. 